Hey guys, what's up? This is Ben Golliver and Paul Flannery here for SB Nation. We just saw game two here in Miami. The Heat ran away with it, 103-84, a monster second half. LeBron James kind of quiet early, really turned it on, and the Heat just couldn't be stopped. I mean, it was a, a shellacking, if you will. Ben, when they go on those runs, it was, I think it was 24-3. to that's what we're going to call it, 24-3. No other team in the league can match them when they're, when they're playing like that. We didn't see it all that much in the playoffs up to this point, but we saw it tonight. I don't think any team in the league can stay with them when they do. The San Antonio, as good as they are, everything for they do, they can't, they can't compete on that level when Miami's running out, getting dunks, getting, getting steals in the half court, getting the turnovers they didn't get in game one. And it was, you know, it was capped off by this LeBron block, which was an amazing play. But let's be real here. There was a lot more going on than, than just that block. Yeah, kind of to steal a line maybe from a Nike commercial, Miami's better is better than you're better, right? I right. mean, when they're at their peak, nobody's keeping up with them. And I think what people are going to forget about uh, in looking at that amazing block was, frankly, the game was already over at that point. Miami had gone on a 15-0 run, stretching from the end of the third quarter into the early fourth quarter. And, and LeBron's block came about a minute after that run concluded where basically they held San Antonio for eight possessions with absolutely nothing. San Antonio was taking lots of jumpers, missing those jumpers. They were committing three turnovers during that stretch. They really got nothing. And all the, all the big players for San Antonio were involved. Tony Parker was missing shots. Tim Duncan was throwing the ball away. Manu Ginobili was missing three-pointers. Uh, and so really what you saw was a situation where all three of uh, San Antonio's key players played a bad game at the same time. They just have no chance in that situation if that's going to happen. And I think that's the message Popovich gave to these guys. It's like, if we're not hitting on any of our cylinders, well, what are we doing here? You know, we're not going to have a chance. So here's my question as, as we shift now to San Antonio. Who has the advantage? We got a 1-1 series. You know, San Antonio can be sitting there going, okay, we got a split. We're going home. We've got, we, you know, we've got home court, so to speak. Who's got the advantage now? Well, Miami's certainly happier than they were 24 hours ago. Right. No question about that. And actually, I thought San Antonio was not quite as confident as I thought they would be. I thought there might be a little sense of, hey, we're playing with house money. We took home court advantage away. We won game one. We're happy with that. Uh, and in actuality, Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili both said, hey, guys, we gave away the momentum. You know, we really got uh, killed out there. We need to play a little bit better. And I think really what's going to end up deciding this series, it all comes back to Tony Parker. He can either figure out Miami's defense and get San Antonio's offense back on track, or we can expect more of these kinds of routes because we know Miami's offense is going to be there. You know, you know, I'm looking at this series, Ben, and I'm saying to myself, whatever happened tonight won't have that much of an effect on game on game three. Whatever happened in game one didn't have a lot of effect in game yeah. two. I think each game is going to be an entity unto itself. I'm not sure either team has the advantage. I mean, I think we're, we're definitely coming back here. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we're ending in San Antonio. Yeah, Charles Barkley said, hey, it could go four or five, but San Antonio is going to win. I expect probably to be booking a trip back here to Miami, and I think most people would expect I, that. I think so. And, I mean, you know, it's, if San Antonio can come back here 3-2, then they got a fighting chance. And if not, it's going to be very, very difficult. Game three is going to be pivotal and huge in this series. I honestly have no feel for how that game is going to go. I think the Spurs are going to make a lot of adjustments. I think, like you say, Tony Parker is going to have a, have a little bit of a chance to figure out what they're doing against him and maybe make some adjustments there. Game three, I think, will be epic. And I listen, we all thought this series was going to be long. This is what you get in a long series. You get a blowout here or there. You get a, you get a close game here or there. I think we're going six or if not seven. One thing I would say is we've seen Miami play great like we talked about earlier. We saw them play kind of average or you know above average for them in game one. We've seen San Antonio play slightly above average. We've seen them play poor, I think, in game two. It's probably fair to call that a poor performance. We haven't seen San Antonio play great yet. They right. are capable of playing a lot better than they've shown so far in this series, so there could easily be a game in San Antonio where they do the same thing to Miami that's just happened to them. Yeah, I, I think we could see that. But you know what? Again, nobody can reach that level that Miami reached tonight. They are a very scary team when they reach that level. It's frustrating that they just flip the switch sometimes. Yeah. Is it, why don't they just keep it constantly on and make our lives easy? <laughs> and we could all just say Miami's the best team in the NBA. Every single night we'd look like geniuses. All right, guys, that's all we got here from uh, Miami. We're headed to San Antonio on early flights. We'll get back at you after game three on Tuesday.